Hallelujah. Somebody make some noise for Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Make some noise for Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brother Dylan, this is God's house. So that tells you something that them children are always welcome wherever they want to go. It ain't like them churches where they say, make them children sit down. Jesus said, you tell them disciples, I said, get back. Them children are always welcome. Hallelujah. Y'all enjoy yourself. Don't worry about it. Hallelujah. That's what we got to learn. If, 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 a, if a child distracts you, the world's really going to distract you. Amen. Come on, somebody. You know, I don't want to do something like I get tired of doing church. I like the Holy Ghost just to have his. I just like the Holy Ghost to fill the room. And I love when we get out of the way and we let God have his way. I'm going to be honest with you. I, I come into church and I had like this extraordinary pain through my right foot from doing something, uh, picking up something I had no business picking up. Thank you for dealing, for getting that off of me. Hallelujah. Because I had no business being under it. I walked out of here a few moments ago when, you know how I get Jeremy, I just, you ever felt like, Lord, where you at? Can I talk to some real people in this church? I walked in here and I said, God, I'm here to do what you want me to do. And it's hard to preach with that much pain running through me. Move. I laid hands on it. I anointed it with oil. And nothing was moving. I walked into the back room and I got along with Jesus. And I said, I'm here. When you going to come? You ever felt like you just need to feel his presence even stronger than what you feel it? And God just has a way, don't he? My mama takes care of the kids in the back of the church. And there was something that God gave me in prison. And I carried it everywhere I went. It was my favorite scripture. And I was in the back and Dylan come back here where I was at and I had my head down and I said, did you know? He said, I knew. Let me pray with you. He prayed with me and when he got done praying, Dylan, he, I told him, I said, lay your hand on this leg. That's what I need more than anything. That pain is kicking my butt. He laid his hand on my leg and we got done praying and you know, sometimes things happen instantaneously. I've seen God heal cancer. I've seen him heal AIDS. I've seen God do things that no man can do. And I looked and I was like, take it. And I looked up on the wall and my mama had posted this on the wall. Fear not. For I'm with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. Yes, Jason. I will help you. Quit taking, you need to apply that, apply your name there. When he says, yes, I will help you. I'd say, yes, I will help you, Jason. I put my name there. And I will uphold you in my righteous right hand. And as the ladies began to sing and Brother Donnie and, man, I just felt the peace of God rest on my shoulders. I was at my house and I was wrestling with this sermon. Y'all stay with me, okay? Stay with me for a moment. I know pastors usually running around crazy. But I feel the peace of my daddy in this room. And I got so aggravated at home trying to get a sermon together. And I got right there at the back of the church and I said, Lord, I ain't worried about it. It's, it's your house. I'm your vessel. I'm not worried about the words I need to say. You'll take care of it. Then I remembered something that I forgot. 2,020 years ago, a man stepped out of heaven. And here I was, worried about a sermon. He stepped out of heaven for me, for you. When the world gave up on us and called us trash. When they said we would ever amount to nothing. 
Jesus stepped out anyway. They may be trash, but they my trash. Come on, somebody. I am so thankful that even when I miss it, my daddy don't ever let me get too far. I've learned, Jeremy, that as long as Jesus is my partner, I had a lot of partners in crime, and they all told on me, hallelujah. <laughs> the police showed up and they left. Things got hard and they left. But the harder it gets and the harder the pressing, Jesus remains faithful. Come on, somebody. Woo! He's a good, good father. Today I want to talk to you about who are you partners with? Who are you partners with? And, and I know we say that we're partners with the Lord, but I believe as we get into this message that the Lord just begins to do his thing here, we'll find that we're often partners with the wrong person. We're often pro we're, we're partners with the wrong entity. Come on, somebody. We partner up with Satan and don't even realize it. I want you to look at Numbers chapter 14 with me real quick. Hallelujah. Father, just remove me from this church. They don't need me, Jesus. They need you. I can't even stand up right without you. Lord, forgive me, Lord, for where I didn't just, just say thank you. We're approaching Christmas, God, and so many people are worried about what they're buying or what they're not getting or what they're getting. And you gave us the best gift that we'll ever receive. That's you, Lord. You love my ignorance. You love my stupidity. You love my shortcomings. You love my fall downs. You love this trailer park trash they used to call me. You picked me up. You gave me a name. They may call me 01362 prisoner. But now I'm bound to you. And who the sun sets free. Jesus, thank you for coming. Thank you for leaving glory. Thank you for laying your head down on a pig manger. Lord, we, we paint this picture of this manger scene and how pretty and peaceful it was. But the truths were, God, that they didn't have room for you then. And Lord, I'm ashamed to tell you that it seems like this world don't have room for you now. But I got a room at my house that is always yours for me and my house. We will serve you. Thank you, Jesus. Believe in glory and stepping in hell where I made my bed so many times. I don't have a word to thank you enough. But I don't want to continue this service without thanking you. I pray, God, that you just wrap your arms around everybody under the sound of my voice. <laughs> Let them feel your love. Let them feel the Prince of Peace. I don't know where I'd be without you. Jesus, I love you. Take this microphone. Have your way in this church. It's in the name of Jesus in the church say it. Hallelujah. hallelujah. We don't say amen because amen means it's finished. We say hallelujah, don't we, Kingdom Church? Hallelujah. We just getting started. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Anybody feel Jesus in this room? <laughs> Woo. Hallelujah. Feeling him in my feet, David. Hallelujah. In the Bible reads, chapter 14 of Numbers. Everybody there. Say, Pastor, give me, the, give me the place and we can get there. Hallelujah. 
Numbers, <laughs> that's right, David. Numbers chapter 14. Hey, hallelujah. Numbers chapter 14. Numbers chapter 14. We're going to read verse 1 through 4. So all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried. And the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron. And the whole congregation said to them, If only we had died in the land of Egypt, or if we had only died in the wilderness. Have you ever got to a place where you were so far away and you just thought, man, I think it would have been better if I'd have left here a long time ago. Come on, somebody. I got some real people in this church. I missed it so bad, God. I think you should have just left me where you found me. I'm just glad he didn't. Come on, somebody. Verse 3, why has the Lord brought us to this land to fall by the sword that our wives and our children should become victims? They got a lot to complain about, don't they? I think we can complain about a whole lot of things that we should be very thankful about, church. Would it not have been better for us to return to Egypt? Now they want to go back. So they said to one another, let us select a leader and return to Egypt. Father, today, Lord, I don't, I just need you, Lord, and they sure don't need me. They need you, Father. Give me wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to preach your word. God, I will do whatever you tell me to do. God, if you tell me to put the mic down, I'll put it down. If you tell me to pray, I pray. It's your service. We're your people. We need to hear from a holy God. So use me, Lord, as you see fit. Step in these shoes, Lord, and hold back every word from Pastor Robin's God and just let your word come forth. Your words change everything. Lord, have your way in this church. It's in the name of Jesus and the church said. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the sight of the Lord. <laughs> this is a familiar passage. How many of you remember when the children of Israel were about to go into the promised land? And they said, before we enter what God is about to take us to, let's send in some spies. Hallelujah. Y'all remember the story. They sent in the spies and Joshua and Caleb went in and they had some people that they were connected with. Their partners went in with them. And as they went in, they began to see giants. They began to see things that did not match up to what God could do. God, I know you can do this, I know you can do that, but Lord, that's some big giants right there. That is some mountains, Jesus, we ain't never faced before. And God is saying, didn't I tell you that it was yours? I said, cross it and take it. I don't care what kind of giants there. I'm with you, my God. Go get it. They get across the Jordan and two the spies get in and the people that they were connected to begin to look around and they seen circumstance. They seen the situations. They seen the trials, the tribulations. They seen mountains. They even said these men, these giants were nothing but grasshoppers. Right then and there, they parten partnered with Satan himself because they took a truth for a lie. I want to talk to you before I even get in this sermon. How many times has God told you to go somewhere to do something, but you partner with the thoughts in your mind instead of what God said he could do to begin with? God has a promise that will come forth. God's promise, God's word will not return void. If God said it, write it down, take a note. I promise you it's better than your 401k. It's better than your insurance. If God said he's with you, it will come to pass. Do I got a witness in this church? Yeah. Hallelujah. In Proverbs it says this. I want you to hear it. Just listen. Whoever is a partner with the thief... Hates his own life. He swears to the truth. But he reveals nothing. I know in my heart of hearts. That we have partnered. With the enemy himself. With doubt. 
Lord, I know you said that, that I can make it. I know you said our marriage can make it. Lord, I know you said that, that I would be financially stable, that I wouldn't have to beg for bread, Lord, but I find the times are hard. And you begin to doubt God. I'd just stop by here before I go to heaven to tell somebody. Right then and there, you started partnering with the thief that come to steal, kill, and destroy the promise that God has for you. Today I declare and decree in the name of Jesus. This ain't for everybody. But it's for somebody in this building. God is saying I'm trying to do something in your life. But you got to quit listening to the enemy. The thing I have for you. It ain't going to match up with what you see. Everything that I've told you that you could be. It's not going to match up to who they say you are. We cannot conquer this. We cannot make this. Joshua is going, we ain't got to make it. God's going with us. God's going to come with us. Come on, somebody. But when Joshua and Caleb came into the promised land, they were partners with the thief. And the thief came in as the friend, the one they walked with. The one they talk with. The one they had confidence in. And as they begin to get there, they seen giants. They seen dead ones. But the ones that they were connected to, Jeremy Brown said, there's no way we can be, defeat this. Has there ever been a time in your life when you thought, how can God do this? I remember trying to get my children my little girl, I remember trying to, 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 to restore things that I had tore apart. And I'm saying, how God can you fix something that I burned down? How can you fix something that I gave up on a long time ago and God brought me back? Before I go to heaven to tell somebody if you will quit partner with the devil that is lying to your mind and still in your mind and still in your heart making you unbelieve that God is who he said he is he said I'm for you not against you I go before you come on somebody I make crooked roads straight but as long as you see the crooked road you want to turn back the children of Israel said, that road don't look straight. It ain't rainbows and skittles. It can't be of God. I think that we'd just be, we would be better off where we came from. I think we would be better off even in Egypt. I think we would be better off where we, I, I don't know, who was I fooling? And then the enemy begins to speak. Who are you? And then, Lord, he likes to remind you of everything that you did and didn't do. And you begin to listen to him. And when you begin to listen to that voice, you're partnering with the voice of enemy. And the Bible says that whoever is a partner with this devil, he is the thief. That's who the thief is. He's the liar. He come to steal your life. He come to steal your joy. He came to steal your promise. And the Lord dropped this in here. 29, 24 Proverbs. Who is a partner? Whoever or whosoever is a partner with the thief. He even takes it as far as is. You must hate your own life. Because see, I needed you together in your mother's womb. I got a plan for you. I got a future for you. But I, I know I told you, son, through the word of God, if you would take time to read it and know who I am, and then you would know how to cancel out the voice of the enemy. You would say, hold on, the greater is he that's inside of me than you, you lying devil. You might have lied to me again, but you won't take it again. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Let me come in here. I'm going to get in this word. I want you to hear this. Praise your holy name. I know it says Holy Spirit when I read this, but I like the Holy Ghost better. Yeah, Holy Ghost. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. You're going to get me running across pews, woman. <laughs> Woo! Yes, Therefore, as the Holy Ghost says, today, if you will 
hear his voice. Not that lying devil's voice. The Holy Ghost is dropping something in your lap right now. Because the enemy has been stealing from you for way too long. You have partners with things you have no business being partner with. Do I got a witness in this church? I've been a partner of fornication. I've been a partner of lies. I've been a partner of, of drugs, alcohol. I've been a partner of all of it. At the end of every bottle, I still needed Jesus. At the end of every bag, I still needed Jesus. At the end of every pill bottle, I still needed Jesus. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Good God Almighty, thank you, Jesus. The Holy Ghost says this. I love how he put it in here. The Holy Ghost says. Today, if you will hear your daddy's voice, if you will hear him, some of you can't hear him because you have turned the volume up on Satan because you have became a partner of him from doubt, unbelief. How are you going to do this? I doubt it. It might work for them, but not for me. I seen God bless everybody but me. When you quit thinking like that, you can get out of that. But as long as a man thinks, that's what the Lord said, as a man thinketh, so is he. So if you want to get some stinking thinking, the devil tells you right here, steal everything that God had for you because you were partner with the thief. It's time to put the devil where he belongs and us up on our feet. Come on, somebody. Do not harden your heart as, as in rebellion. Some of you have a hardened heart because you've been praying and asking God where is he at and you've been asking when he's going to move and when is he going to take this pain? When is he going to take this shame? When, Jesus, and you're not seeing it and now you're hearing the voice of the enemy, he would answer if it wasn't you. Uh, if it was anybody else but you, but, your, but everything that you've done disqualified you. He can't use you. The devil is a lie. And what happens when you listen to the thief long enough, he begins to harden your heart. I remember thinking about my, my father on this earth and thinking, Lord, why in the world would you give me such a somebody like that that ain't never gave me the time of day, ain't never told me he loved me, ain't never hugged my neck, and something happened in that little boy. A heart began to harden. And then it, the enemy comes in. You don't need them. You don't need this. See, everybody paints Satan out like he got these big old pitchfork and he's going to have these pokey head and he's going to walk up to you and tell you, I'm going to drag you to hell. Mm -mm. He comes in like your bestest friend. That's the thief. See, back in the day before I knew Jesus, I might have stopped by your place to check you out. And act like we were going to case it out. We're going to check it out. See what's going on. Then later on, we'd send one of them in. Don't look at me like you ain't ever done nothing. I heard the wrong voice. And he began to steal everything around me. And he began to harden my heart so bad. That I began to hear the voice of Satan so loud. And even when God tried to speak to me, Lori. I turned Tupac up louder. Me against the world. And the more that I heard it, and the more pain, and the more hurt, and the more shame, the more I try to numb it. Can I talk to somebody? And Satan is whispering. Man, just get you a drink. Burn you one. Pop you a pill. Go chill out, man. Anybody been through all the hell you've been through? He whispers. And the Bible says right then and there, you just partnered with the thief. That came to take everything that God has for you. He told Joshua like this, you're standing in front of the Jordan and I want you to cross it right now, son. But you got some stuff with you. Cut it off. 
Some of you in here right now have got some partners that need to be cut off. It could be your friends. It could be your family. Can I just be honest with you? Some of it is some things that you can't cut off because it's yourself. Some of you are your worst enemy. And the only one that can heal that is Christ Jesus. Come on, somebody. Do not harden your heart as in rebellion in the days of trial in the wilderness. How quick are we to blame God when trials and tribulations come? How quick are we to ask, where are you, Jesus, where this pain is on me? Where are you, Jesus? And the Lord's in the back. Fear not, I'm with you. How much longer do I got to stay with you? Don't you know that I told you I'd never leave you? I don't take a day off. I don't sleep in a slumber. I walk with you wherever you go. But son, every time I try to talk to you, you listen to a thief. And he's slowing you down. The children of Israel had a seven day journey. They wandered around for 40 years. And let me tell you what's so sickening. Caleb and Joshua. They knew the voice of God. They knew what God said would come to pass. They understood if God be for me, then what devil in hell can stand against me? But the very thing that they were partners with hindered them. Some of you today need to part ways from that enemy. I got news for you. You don't want to hear this. He don't just want you. He wants your kids. He wants your wife. He wants to destroy everything you hoped for. Everything you dreamed for. Every promise that God told you. What y'all get twisted up sometimes? The devil knows the promise that God has for you. He was in the throne room with God. See, God's gifts, he doesn't take back. So everything that he equipped the enemy with, he hasn't lost it. His time is almost up. Church, I don't know if we'll make it past 2022. Everything has been fulfilled. And this world is getting worse and worse and worse. They're lying and telling you need a vaccine. You need the blood of Jesus. You don't need no devil. You don't need nothing. You don't need nobody or nothing. What you need is Jesus. That's what we need. Working in a house and a man told me the other day, he said, one day you'll need medicine. I said, no, what I need is Jesus. And he went on and he said, yeah, 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 but, but hear me, preacher. One day you will need a medicine. You ain't never took medicine? See how the devil does? I said, yeah, God will even use a donkey, brother. He'll use medicine. But the moment that I think that I got to depend on the medicine, that's when I got a problem. The moment that I think that I got to have a medicine to protect me, the moment that I start walking in fear, preachers talking about, can you pray for him because I don't want to catch it. And you don't care. Now, that's right. It ain't that I don't care. I do care. But I believe what he told me. Donnie, he said, I can walk across scorpions. He said that I can run a devil back to hell. He told me. And I believe what he told me. I caught it, Corona. And Jesus slapped it upside the head. And pushed it out the door. That's who he is. What happens when people get sick, the voice of the enemy gets real loud. Where's God now? I heard it. Donnie, I heard it laying on my back in my lungs, doing all kind of stuff. I heard it, I was crocking my eyes. And I could hear the enemy. You need to make things right before you leave. Don't go near your family, they'll get it too. 
stay in here with me. Don't go out there. See, he wants to isolate you. If you ever in a moment right now and you like being alone, you're hearing from the wrong enemy. Because God's people are not lone wolves. They are not isolated. When you quit liking people, when you don't want to be around God's people, you are under attack. And there is a voice that is so loud that is drowning in your voice. And I want you to hear me. The Bible says, whoever is partners with this thief. And the thief will even swear the truth will be revealed to you. But nothing will come forth. Because everything he said from the beginning was a lie and everything to the end will be a lie from him. It's not that I'm against medicine and that ain't where I'm turning this to. But I'm for Jesus. I believe we have to get more dependent on Jesus than anything else. You got to depend on Jesus for the air that you breathe. We take for that for granted. Watch this. When your fathers tested me and tried me, how many of you have tested God? How many of you have tried to make a bargain with God? God, if you do this, I'll be at church every Sunday. Come on, somebody. If you just move this, Lord, then I could preach. If you just do this, then I can move. I mean, Lord, really, it's kind of like you slowing me down. If you would open the door. Right then and there, the enemy is whispering to you because if God has not opened the door, that's because God is protecting you from the door. Pay attention what voice you are hearing. Listen to this. Therefore, I was angry with that generation and said that always go, they, they always go astray in their heart. They always go astray in their heart when all hell breaks loose. When nothing matches up, when I don't feel blessed and highly favored, when I don't feel like the head and not the tail, when I don't feel those things, the Bible says that the heart begins to go astray. And when the heart go astray, Ryan, the voice of the enemy begins to lie to you. I told you a long time ago that God had promises. He had plans for you. You remember? I told you, I said, you can open your own business if you would believe it. You can do these things. I've had God tell me things. Son, I've called you to the ministry. I had to have my sister Andrea kick me in the butt so it would turn up the voice of God. Didn't you say we can't, we have to walk by faith, Pastor? And I said, yeah got to walk by faith, Andrew. She said, well, why don't you step out on faith? And here you go. You ready for it? See, this is how Satan works. If you step out on faith, what if one of your kids gets sick? Then the company that you work for, you won't have insurance no more. Son, you need to really think about it. If you walk away from this, then it's not a guarantee you'll get this, you'll get that. Right here, you can plan on this. I got to the clock, clock I'll never forget. And God met me at it. He said, you trust me with eternity. You trust me with heaven. But you don't trust me to financially take care of. Can I tell you that everything that you got, it came from God. The strength that you got to get up on your feet, God give you. But when you partner with complaining, you partner with a thief. When you partner with this job sucks, they don't pay me enough. You just partner with a thief because you should be grateful that you got a job. You should be grateful that you got help. You should be grateful that God provides. So when we start complaining, understand who you're hooking up with. And I've told you before, what you're connected to can bless you or curse you. Come on, somebody. Mm, where we at? Hallelujah. Many of you today are partners with anger. Anger, mom and daddy sucked. Anger, I didn't have the I didn't have the chance the rest of them had. Angry that you're not where 
you want to be. Angry that you're not further than you thought you would be. Some of you are partners with unforgiveness. Any of these things that I'm telling you, you were hooked up with a thief. I am partners with this thief because of unforgiveness. Pastor, you don't understand. They molested me. They raped my sister. They raped me. I don't, no, 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 no. You need to hear me. Because the enemy now has turned up the voice. Don't let them touch you again. Don't let them hurt you. He don't know what you've been through. He don't know. I want you to know that is not the voice of God. Because Jesus' word would come in. Pray for your enemy. Pray for the ones that hurt you. Pray for the ones that prosecute you. Pray for the one that drug you through the mud. But what do we do? Our hearts get hardened, don't it, Dave? With people. And God is trying to teach us what he taught Paul a long time ago. You must get up every morning and crucify your flesh. Every morning, say, Lord, I don't want to partner with nothing unless it's you. Teach me, Lord, to be grateful. Teach me to be thankful. I don't want to be partners with ungratefulness. I don't want to be partners where I'm so unkind to others. I know they don't deserve it. Right then and there, you hooked up with a thief. And all he's doing, Dave, and he just drags. So he don't, I know people, the Bible says he kills, steals, destroy. You've heard me tell you before. Satan will hang out with you long enough so he can destroy everything around you first. He wants to destroy everything around you because what happens when, when he starts destroying things around you, your heart hearts. Now you just became partners with the one that's going to take everything from you. God said, I have a plan for you and I want to bless you. I have plans for you to prosper you. If you feel today that you're not being prospering, you feel like I'm not going forward. I, I feel like I'm still being dragged back. I'm still having all these crazy thoughts. Every time I see them, I thought I forgive them. But I've said I forgive my daddy 1,001 million times, Holly. And I can see him in Bilo and go to the other side of Bilo. I can see his truck, Dave, and go to the other side of the parking lot. Where were you then? Why do I need you now? Oh, I ain't the only one. Church, I just stopped by here before I go to heaven to tell you. Right then and there, Gene, I heard the wrong voice. And the Lord said, didn't I forgive you? Didn't I forgive you? You remember when they all threw you away and I came? You remember when you was in a penitentiary and nobody wanted you and I came? You remember when you were living in under, on, on these abandoned houses? You remember when you was in the dome? Do you remember? They wouldn't give you the time of the day, but I came anyway. Cold shake, thank you, Jesus. Whew. Church, I want to see you blessed. I'm going to close with this point. A lot of you are partners with the poison in your tongue. You speak death on yourself. I was meeting with a young lady the other day. Such a powerful young lady. I actually, I love watching her grow. And I see one thing, but ain't it funny how people can see one thing, but you see something else. I seen a beautiful young girl, smart, intellect. I seen a Holy Ghost fire. I seen a lot of things. A friend that anybody would love to have. That always spoke truth. And I asked this young lady. I said, can you tell me your strengths? She began to tell me everybody else's. I said, no, honey. What's your strength? Not his. Not your daddy's. Not your mom. What's yours? By the time I got talking to her, Andrea, she put her head down. And she just cried. Because all she had heard, David, 
was the enemy tell her everything that she wasn't. Some of you in this room, you don't think you deserve it. You think it's just good enough that Jesus saved you. My God is better than that. He didn't pick you up out of the miry pit. He didn't take dry dead bones and bring them back to life to leave you to fight on your own. The problem, church, we got to watch what we're partnering with. This tongue that you got to partner with, the Bible says that it can set your whole soul on fire. Life comes out of it or death comes out of it. Blessings come out of it or curses come out of it. When's the last time you spoke blessings on yourself? When's the last time you laid your hands on your children? When's the last time you laid your hands on yourself? Thank you, Jesus, you saved this. Come on, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. You start laying hands on yourself and you start speaking life over yourself. You're partnering with the one that made you. It's time to get the one that we have entertaining so much. Can I get everybody just to stand to your feet? The Lord wants to do something in this building. Can I get you all to come down?